All right, everybody, welcome to a, another episode of Locked on Avalanche. I don't like I, I was all excited to record this and then we're recording it after the Kansas City Chiefs kick a field goal to go to the Super Bowl, which does not make me happy. And I even put up on Twitter, like, can, is it possible for no team to win the Super Bowl? It's going to be difficult to watch this, but it was good watching the Avalanche for another four, 30, 40 minutes leaving and then for like the last bit they struggle again but they come out with two points against the blues which is exactly what they needed to follow up that loss against anaheim we'll talk about all that and then some and we have a week of zero games for the avalanche a lot to get to today another episode of locked on avalanche coming at you you're locked on avalanche your daily podcast on the colorado avalanche Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Locked On Avalanche. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day. That is always appreciated. You can follow us on our social media outlets, LOP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter, Locked On Avalanche on Instagram. Questions, comments, concerns, and opinions to Lockdown Avalanche at gmail.com and follow us on our YouTube channel over on YouTube. Hit subscribe to get notified when a new show goes live. And I swear to you, we never plan Star Wars Day <laughs> here at Locked if you're watching on uh, YouTube. I think I think the last time we did this too, when last time we wore these shirts and hoodies, like it it was at the same time. I could be wrong on that, but the force is strong between the two of us. So uh yeah it's it's how we celebrate the all-star break man when there's no hockey you just turn to star wars basically i mean what else is there to do yeah um all right we'll get to the avalanche and uh the the weekend against the blues and we did not have an episode uh following the ducks game so kind of a lot to get to in terms of games uh but uh real quickly we know the super bowl what's your early pick I'm going to go Eagles, and I don't think it's even going to be close. Really, really. I mean, well, I think Mahomes will be will be healed up by then, but um, I think it's going to be a good game. I I just I cannot root for Kansas City. Like if if you were in the division with with Denver, no, I'm sorry, you're not getting my vote. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping the Eagles take this thing. So I've been I think it's wrong gonna be the game. entire time. So congratulations, Kansas yeah. City. I think it's going to be an entertaining game. So we we shall see. Obviously. Um, all right, so the Avalanche, since the last time we recorded, two games have been played. They won one and they lost one. The one that they they lost, they had in their hand, and a poor third period gives it to the Anaheim Ducks of all teams. And, and that one kind of hurt because you were you were flying. You were you were on a nice win streak. People have kind of forgotten about you know the the bad losing that had been going on at the 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 turn of the calendar. Uh, you just traded. You got rid of Martin Kaut. You you bring in a familiar face, and just things seem to be going the right. And during that game, same thing. Like it, it started off very well, um, but this is an, another loss to a team that and I and I use this term Lucy that you should beat. Because, like we've said before, hockey is that sport where literally any team can beat any other team on any day. And that's true for, you know, even when teams are going up against the Avalanche. But if you follow on Twitter, I put up six games that they've lost to bottom-dwelling teams. That's 12 points that while I don't expect you to win all of those, you should be winning most of those. You can't lose to Arizona. You can't lose to Chicago and Vancouver two times, and Anna. Like, you cannot lose to those teams repeatedly. It is going to happen, uh, uh, you know, during the course of the season. But it just seems like when the Avalanche are playing the, these these bottom-of-the-standing teams, they falter one way or another. This Anaheim game almost felt kind of detached from that list. We talked about it on our last episode. This Anaheim game reeks of trap game. Is that take a breath? Um, yeah, I mean they're going to come out there and surprise you because it's the defending Stanley Cup champion, and it's the same. The Avalanche see, like they don't play again until February seventh. They see this; they know it's right there. They're using up all their gas 
to get ahead, get the lead, and you saw it in Anaheim, and you saw it in the Blues game. The third period, coast. Save it, get through it. It proved to be a losing effort against Anaheim because that team is looking to prove something. The Blues have no idea who they are, and they don't even know why Mm -hmm. they're playing the game. So, (laughs) like, the Avalanche continue doing what they do because they're – goalie is extremely emotional they lost the game but anaheim they took advantage of the avalanche coasting and they saw that as an opportunity and this is something that bednar will be absolutely talking about with the team that you cannot we need full 60 minutes hey you guys are you're listening to what i said about getting a good start but i'd also like a good finish as well and that's the the common denominator both of these games is the third period and and i can you can there be a, a trap game in the middle of a game? Like when I when I think trap game, I think like uh you know the duration of the game is a is a battle, is a struggle. And you, you kind of took that team for granted before the game even started. And then when you went in, you're kind of coasting from you know the opening puck drop or the opening, you know, uh, see, yeah. kickoff. You know what I mean? And, and you didn't get that vibe against Anaheim. Like they, they were playing. The first period, they they played. What they get like almost twenty shots on goal in the first yep. period against Anaheim. So um, you just felt like okay, just keep doing that, and, and which is the norm for Anaheim. I think they give up almost forty shots a game. So you just keep doing that, and then you know you'll you'll get some that that'll just get by him, and you should be able to get four or five goals in this game. And they're up three to one, and and then I think that's when they settled. And it, that's what I'm saying, like. Can you have a trap game in the middle of a game? Uh, maybe you you can't. Maybe you just start coasting. But that's that's in both of these games. You saw it's a combination of you feel like the Avalanche are just are just not letting up, but just going through the motions. Let's just get the neutral zone, get the center ice, dump it in, change, and just do that over and over and over again instead of forcing the issue again, which I don't like when you do that because. It, forcing the issue not not, i shouldn't say forcing the issue playing your game it's not even forcing the issue it's playing your game got you to where you are and while they are switching and they have to change because they can't allow that stuff to keep happening yeah they're getting defensemen engaged more and they're pressing more they have to you struggle to combat that and your, your your top line is that's when they need to take over guys like nathan mckinnon say like i'm putting this team on my shoulders um, and it, and it's just for one reason or another, it's not happening. So while I'm happy they got the win against the the uh, the Blues, uh, that's a pattern I don't want to see continue. What it feels like is you remember when we put a touchdown on Ottawa, and then mm-hmm. we had that commanding win against Detroit. That was off losing seven of eight. Now the Avalanche win seven of eight, mm-hmm. and it feels like especially with this last little bit of games that we had right before the All-Star break, it feels like the Avalanche understand if we play at 100 miles an hour, we can have games like Ottawa. They're trying to find their mid right now, and it's weird because they know if you're just coasting the yeah. entire game, you lose seven of eight. But they're try- it's like they feel like we've done enough through the first two periods. Let's get out of here healthy. Let's not make any mistakes, and we'll be fine. And they need to get out of that mindset. They're they're trying to find that that speed to get them through the rest of the games after the All Star break. But you're at the the finish line of the All Star break. Keep going, hundred miles an hour. Enjoy the rest. It's frustrating. It, it's uh, I don't know. It's just a frustrating thing to watch because you see what they they do. And and you know earlier in the year we were getting upset at how the Avalanche were starting games. Yeah, it's like they they didn't show up, and once it got into the later parts of the first period, and then into the second period is when they started getting going. Now it's the end of games. That was the the beginning. They look good, and look what's happening. They're getting leads, and then, like I said, it's a combination of them just maybe they're taking their foot off the gas a little bit, coupled with the other team barreling down on you because they're not just going to roll over. They're trying to win a game too. And I actually agree with Gary Bettman that there is no tanking in the NHL. Like, you know, that that was a big comment over the, the weekend by him. Um, I agree with him. It doesn't happen. By it, players, it, it doesn't happen. So 
it really it feels like the avalanche are adjusting a picture that's on the wall you look at it and you see something's wrong so you mm-hmm. go and adjust it and you're like i think i might have liked it the other way <laughs> and then unless you really get in there with a like a level or make a mark somewhere and yeah. really give it the fine adjustments <clears throat> you're not going to fix it and i feel like the avalanche are sitting there and stepping back <laughs> and that's that's exactly yeah. what this feels like all right, so we'll get to more of the uh, the St. Louis game. We do have a sound check to get to as well. And is this something that we should just accept that this is what the Avalanche team is this year? We'll ask that question uh, after we hear from Athletic Greens. We talk about Athletic Greens here quite often. And with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, source superfoods, probiotics, and aptogens. To help you start your day right, the special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, even your energy, your recovery, and your focus, everything that's important to you. It is lifestyle friendly, whether you eat kaleo. kaleo. That's a combination of keto and paleo, by the way. I think I just invented a new diet. I I subscribe to it. I don't even know what it is, but uh, I just put it together. So keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Uh, you can uh, rest assured and be comfortable using Athletic Greens. It contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good. It costs less than $3 a day and you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew and coffee habits. So right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day and that's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens are going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Once again, it's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Okay, so yeah, that question that I posed before uh, that break, I, I think, you know, people always say like the the, the Stanley Cup hangover, uh, whatever. I mean, I don't think there's been any scientific studies done on that. I think it's just uh, observers. And that's where I want to go with this. Like from, from a fan and observer standpoint, are, are, are you – expecting the avalanche to repeat not a Stanley Cup win I think we all are because this team can prove that they that they can win that but just the play how they are playing it's more of a struggle this year than last year and there's a lot of factors that go into that clearly injuries play a part uh roster plays a part you don't have the same roster you now have the title of Stanley Cup champion on your back. So, yes, you're going to get uh, the best from your opponent. There's so many things that go into it. Um, but is this just – I mean, we're, 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 we can no longer say, like, ah, the Avalanche will just rise above it. Like, we're beyond the halfway point. You know what I mean? So, so should we just expect this the rest of the way for the Avalanche to – get a really good game, maybe two or three or four really good games followed up by a dud. Like, like kind of how most teams seasons go, you know, you don't get what what the Boston Bruins are doing, although they've lost three in a row. So, uh, Hey, that, that doesn't happen a lot. And, and in the sport of hockey, you see more of what the avalanche are doing right now in handful of good games followed by a not so good game um are the avalanche just settled into that and because they're coming off the stanley cup championship we as fans are sitting here saying like that's not acceptable i ask this question in response to your question Mm -hmm. what is acceptable what are we looking at here what what do avalanche fans want it's not like you're going to get the president's trophy this year um the pace that Boston set, it's one of those that might be historical if they write the ship and continue on with how they're doing. Avalanche can't do that. The Avalanche last year won a Stanley Cup with Nicholas Abe Kubel on the mm-hmm. roster. Mm-hmm. And Darcy Kemper in net. We have upgraded goaltending. We're still figuring out what we have. And 
as it sits right now going into the All-Star break, the Avalanche are in the playoffs. They are sitting in that second wildcard spot. So what exactly are we getting upset with? They're playing hockey. They won seven of eight. Everything, if you're looking at their body of work, they're putting things back together. Granted, we just talked about they can't finish the third period. They have yeah. a whole week to talk about this. Figure it out. Rest. Recoup. And guess what's on the other side of the All-Star break? The possibility of Manson. Possibility of Byron. Mm-hmm. Nachushkin, possibly. You never know. Right. So, what? there's no need to get upset or panic yet. And especially when you see, like, Minnesota is struggling. Dallas is beatable. Winnipeg is struggling. The teams that are above you are easy to climb. Mm -hmm. So, yes, accept this version of Avalanche hockey because you're seeing the refinements. And if they can, they're getting rest, they're healing. On the other side of this All-Star break, they could be a more dominant Avalanche force than we've even expected. So to answer that question, like what, what, what are we wanting? I, I can't speak for, you know, the entire fan base. Cause um, th- there's some people that, you know, maybe want to trade Miko Ranton in that are out there. You never know. <laughs> um, for me, I, I want to see the compete level never die down. And, and, and that like, I'm okay with losses. Mm-hmm. You're, you're going to lose games. I'm sorry. Like no team has ever gone 82 and oh, and it will never, ever happen. So, you know, losses are going to happen, but how those losses occur is what I look at. Were you in the game? You know, did you take your foot off the gas? Why did you lose that game? Was it bad uh, positioning on defense? Were you not getting uh, good looks on offense? Was it goalie play? Like there's, there's so much that goes into a loss. So when, and, and when you lose to a team like Anaheim, when you're winning, that's like, that to me is not acceptable. Like if, if you're if you're in a dog fight for the entirety of the game, like the, 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 the there's so much that can can there's reasons for that. Even against Anaheim, if you were like down in that game, sure, like you shouldn't lose that game. I get it. But Anaheim is 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 kind of like an upstart team. They're a very young team, so you never know what you're gonna get game in and game out. When you have that many young players on a team that are going up against the Stanley Cup champions, they're gonna get up for that game. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, it, it there, to me, it's just you're you're taking teams that you should be beating with relative ease, and you're not. And when when you when you have leads, and you give it up to those teams, I can't accept those as a loss. I, I just can't do it. So that's I guess my answer to that is yeah. Like, it, what is your compete level for the full sixty? And for the last two games anyway, and you can find a, a, a bunch of games, a handful of games, like we said just a few minutes ago, how the Avalanche were starting games earlier in the year we weren't happy with. So I guess the theme for this year is play a full 60. Yeah. Because the Avalanche and, really are not. And, and they know this. They understand sure this. they do. Oh, yeah. And we didn't win a game against Arizona last year, and we still hoisted the cup. Right. We won up until this point. It was six in a row. We dropped one to Anaheim. We played down to the opponent and kind of just took them for granted and they took advantage of it. That's what scrappy teams do. You learn from it. Mm -hmm. You almost did the same thing against St. Louis, but you wised up and got out of there unscathed. They're learning. They're adjusting. I feel absolutely confident you know what? I feel better with the place. If the Avalanche won 82 games all year long, I would feel I would be terrified going into the playoffs because they haven't been yeah. challenged. <laughs> like, yeah, what yeah. is this team going to do? And then to play down to this level and get knocked out in the first round, that would be embarrassing. The Avalanche are learning things. This is a learning process, what this team looks like and how they're mm-hmm. going to perform. I'm actually kind of fired up to see what this team can put together with a healthy, rested roster, knowing what they know, Falling and um, when they back off of opponents, knowing this going into the next half of the season, I'm excited for the next round of Avalanche hockey. Oh yeah, no, I definitely am. Like I, I like how they're playing, and, and they've got themselves in a position. Like we said, they're, they're in a playoff spot right now, so I'm excited to to watch them. I, I 
even even the dumpster fire season, I, I get excited to watch <laughs> Avalanche hockey. True. But uh, yeah, I, I, I th- this is a different season. Yeah, you know, and and I, a lot of it is roster driven. You know, we're missing big pieces, obviously, Burkowski and Kadri not being there. And so, but that doesn't mean that this team can't rise above. Like, I just want to see, like, the Blues game, right? St. Louis was fired up in that third, and they were they hit through everything at you. That's when I want to see, like I said, someone like Nathan McKinnon or Kale McCarr or Miko Ranton and your big three that are playing right now just say, enough of this, and just weave through traffic. Just, I mean, even if you can't get a goal, you had five shots on goal in the third. Like, th- that, like you, you got to be able to match them possession per, for possession and and get the puck out of the, the zone clean, get the puck into your zone clean, like just man up. And, and, and you just got taken advantage of that entire third period and you escaped with two points. Congratulations. It's a tough sport. It's not easy to do that. But I just feel like when you have that much skill on your team, you should be kind of, if, if you know, there, there's going to be times where the ice is tilted. I get that. Yeah. Tilt it back, grab control back, and and that whole third period was just. I, I mean, I'm <laughs> the the scene in in uh, the Truman Show. Remember when when he's escaping when he when yeah. he's on the boat and he's escaping and there's that guy who's watching the Truman Show in the tub the entire time uh-huh. and he's and he's holding on to yeah. uh, holding on to oh. the. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He's holding on to the shower curtain. And he's like, "Hang on!" Like that's yeah. literally what I was doing, man. So I I don't want to be doing that. Take yeah. take take the power back. And they're running out of milestones in the season for an excuse. Like once you're through the All Star break, that excuse is gone. Then oh, yeah. the trade deadline, there's no more mental. Just get to this point because it's all downhill from here. Yeah. All right, let's hear from uh, FanDuel. And uh, we have not talked about our favorite goalie in Jordan Bennington. Uh, and you know that we have to do that. Uh, but first, we are going to hear from FanDuel. We are really excited about our new sports betting partner. They're locked on because they're the number one sports book in America, and that is FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. You can download FanDuel now so you can bet the Super Bowl, which is Super Bowl 57. Can you believe that? I remember 31 is the first one I can remember. Really? Because 32 was Denver Broncos winning that bad boy. Uh, Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score the first touchdown. And uh, I, I always get a kick out of these the prop bets. Mm-hmm. For So I'm really interested. I don't think they probably have them up right now. Um, I haven't checked them out just yet, but those are always the first thing. And I love, love the time stamp that's put on the National, the National Anthem. Anthem. Yeah. And I think it was a couple years ago. There was some, I think it was, in Tampa, um, and there was somebody who was outside, just happened to be outside the arena when they were rehearsing the national. I remember anthem, that, yeah. And he put the the stop timer on his phone, and it was like, "You're welcome, America." <laughs> I don't know how they continued to put that bet up there, just hoping maybe people didn't see that. But that was a genius move right there. All heroes don't wear capes. That's right. Uh, so the fan, you can do all this on, on FanDuel and the FanDuel Sportsbook app, which is safe, secure, and easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today and FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on to make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book partner of the NFL. All right, so uh, getting back to the the Blues game, and then we will do our uh, our sound check. Um, yeah, the Jordan Bennington thing is just kind of comical, but not in a good way right now. Um, I get, you know, players will, will do things. When we say all the time, like, if a team's losing and they need to get fired up somehow, even especially in hockey, 
maybe someone drops gloves, right? There's always that kind of enforcer role who maybe tries to get his team riled up and, and they'll, they'll go out for a fight or something like that. Um, it's different when a goalie gets involved in that stuff. And it's different when it's Jordan Bennington because he just seems to do this stuff all the time. And for totally unnecessary reasons, like you went after Logan O'Connor for no other reason than he's in front of you looking for a rebound and maybe padded your, your, uh, you know, leg pads. And you didn't like that. So, which happens how many times throughout the game and you let your, your players take care of that. You know, if that happens, they don't like it. They'll move you away. Maybe give you a face wash, whatever. But he seems to get involved in this stuff and then, and then like whoops it up with the crowd again. Um, I genuinely, genuinely, you know, he, he is, there's, there's players out there that are like, Oh, if, if you know that you can't stand and they're like, Oh, if he was on my team, I would root for him. No, I absolutely would not root for Jordan Bennington if he was wearing Colorado Avalanche colors. I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I think he is a poor sport. Um, I think he's a crybaby, and and he's very easy to rile up. And if I was a, a teammate of his, I'd have a sit down and be like, "Dude, knock it off. Yep. You're not helping. You're hurting. We'll take care of that stuff. You just like like Craig Berube said, worry about stopping pucks." There is a difference in Brad Marchand, Tom Wilson, and then Jordan Bennington. Mm. They actually give an edge. Tom Wilson has the intimidation factor. He hits sure. the ice, you, you turn around. Brad Marchand, you have no idea what he's going to do. He's mm -hmm. going to get in your head. Mind games. Jordan Bennington plays mind games with himself. <laughs> and you, you mentioned Craig Berube. Bennington is going to cost Berube his job. If he doesn't like get it together, it's you're on a bad team. Things aren't working and you're just out there floating around looking for a fight. You're a goalie for mm. crying out loud. What but are you going looking to... for a fight? He's hiding behind his, his forwards and his defensemen. Like he, he didn't initially go after uh, O'Connor. He saw like, he kind of looked at him and then he saw that, all his forwards are helping him out, and he's going to get behind them and be like, "Yeah, stop me, stop me!" Like, get and, out of here, man! Like, no. and then does that, and then skates to the bench and starts motioning to the crowd, like, "Let's get it going!" Like, right. they're booing at you, dude, because the Blues can't respect you. I miss when we were in the playoffs. We had Blues fans in the comments all the time, mm -hmm. and I would love to ask a Blues fan, "What on God's green earth do you cheer about with Jordan Bennington? He's not even a semi-average goalie anymore." So no. what, other than the Stanley Cup that you unfortunately have attached to him, you aren't, you can't get free of him. What do you have to cheer for Bennington? Like, I would, if I was a Blues fan, one, I would be very, very sad. And then two, I don't know what I would find. Like, I, I would be just rolling my eyes and trying to talk about anything but Jordan Bennington. So you have him until through the end of the 26 27 season woof and you're paying him six million dollars a year woof. that's a bad bad contract if you ask me like i mean he can let's see what and he is 29 years old right now right so huh. i mean if uh, yeah he, sure it, that's what it says he looks like yeah. an eight year old out there on the ice <laughs> yeah. um I, I i say it's a bad contract because i think the latter years of that are going to be regretful for for St. Louis, if not already. Is ladder uh, Latin for 2023? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's very regrettable right now. I, I It's just every game that he plays, especially against the Avalanche, you're, you're looking for it. You're looking for, okay, if you get to him early, you are going to rattle him. And he wants to come out and say things like, oh, I'm just trying to get my team out. Like, there's other ways to do it. There's other ways to get your team – back into a game than than you being like the aggressor in scrums number one because you you've lost the the ability to do that because of all your actions that came before this you know what i mean like every if, if a goalie does it every once in a while that might get his team involved and hey he's he's getting fired up let's go but when it's jordan bennington it's like okay he's he's lost his mind again 
and just par for the course. And when do you start to not accept that anymore? Um, as a Blues fan, I feel like Brube already has. And um, I guess like Bennington has improved in that area, but I don't know if it's the avalanche after what happened, you know, in the playoffs last year that he just can't let that go. Um, maybe it is. And I know for some blues fans it is, but it's, it's just, it's embarrassing to watch. Um, and I, and I just, I'm just happy that we don't have a player like that on the avalanche. It's almost to the point of crying wolf and he's going to keep firing pucks off after the whistle at people's heads, taking swipes with his stick at people as they skate by doing his little poke check, throwing water bottles, looking for fights. One day he's either going to meet somebody who's been in the league for 15 years and there's nothing you could do about him. Or you're going to meet a guy that gets called up and down every other day and wants to make a name for himself. And he's going to skate up to that person and they are going to put an end to this because the blues aren't, the players aren't holding him accountable. Yeah. Rube is not holding him accountable. Eventually, somebody will, and it's not going to be pretty. And and what O'Connor did wasn't even – it was nothing. You know what I mean? And, and if you're going to get upset about that, man, good Lord. Um, I don't know. And somehow the Blues came out of yeah. that with a power play, which they scored on, by the way, which was an absolute joke. So they gave O'Connor – two for roughing for the scrum that happened afterwards, two for slashing, which somebody on Twitter told me that uh, Connor McGahee had stated the slashing was from when the play was happening. Like, you know, the, the, the hit on like, where was that? Because there was no penalty called there. You did not see the arm up from an official saying like that was an initial call. So that was a makeup call after the fact, which is complete garbage. Somehow the Blues came out on top in that entire debacle and they benefited from it and got a, a power play goal, which was a joke, an absolute joke. So I don't know. Like that, that's where we stand with uh with with Bennington. And and it, it it's always enjoyable to watch, believe it or not, because you just see someone like uh who's just melting down. Uh, but at the same breath, it's like, come on, man. Like, th- this is not this is not how you play the game. And, and you're, you're too, you're too uh, you know, with Wilson and, and Marshan, that, that's good. Like, they're a nuisance in other ways. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, Marshan, you can't stand him, but he does his job in getting under your skin. Uh, good enough to just, where he doesn't even have to do it anymore. He just has yeah. to hit the ice and you that's know. right. Yep. Yep. So, um, all right. One last piece of business to get to, and that is uh, a sound check for this game and the, uh, the St. Louis blues and the Colorado avalanche. We pick one song that we feel best summarizes each, uh, or excuse me, the last game played. And we throw these songs up on a Spotify playlist. Just go search for LOA sound check volume number two. And follow along with that. So what do we got for this one? We just went off on a tangent on Jordan Bennington, and there's a reason for that. So go ahead. my sound check is uh the song I'm dedicating to my worst enemy. Jordan, <laughs> Jordan middle name Bennington. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going with a song that I can say on here because I know my kids watch this show. So <laughs> we're gonna have to go with something I could repeat. Okay. Cry, cry, cry from the man in black, Johnny Cash. Gotta love it. Yeah. Um, I was going to go in a different direction, but nope. Um, I'm going to seize this opportunity and uh, jump on the the crybaby train that is uh, Jordan Bennington. And I'm going to go that same route. There's a very good band, which I like called Spiritualized. Uh, and they have a song called Stop Your Crying. So this is the sound check, the, the Jordan Bennington edition. Uh <laughs> I would have picked the song by CeeLo Green that he made very, very popular. <laughs> but, uh, you know. With a certain uh, certain word in it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Today's um, episode of Sesame Street is brought to you by the letter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll keep it PG. 
Um, all right. So definitely go over to uh, Spotify and uh, search that playlist and follow along. So, yeah, no games all week. So we will be doing some things to fill in the time. We'll be having some trade talk, definitely. Uh, we will get to those Instagram questions. We'll do that tomorrow. Um, and it's a little bit past the halfway point, but we are a little, we are right around it. A couple games after the fact, but we will be doing some mid season grades for the abs. So, uh, a lot to get to and keep the conversation going over on YouTube, uh, or like we said, on our social media, Twitter and Instagram and all that. So, uh, that's going to wrap it up for today. Everybody, thank you for tuning in, making it your first listen of the day. That is always appreciated. And we will be back tomorrow for Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked On Avalanche podcast. We'll see you guys tomorrow.